estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA. These are all hormones that get disrupted at different phases in our life. But how did they get disrupted and what can we do about them? We're going to discuss that and more today at Sunflower Shop. To learn more about hormones, I have brought in an expert, Dr. Joyce Stroud. She's a family physician at South Lake Family Medicine, and she's here to give us insight about hormones. Thanks for being here today, Dr. Stroud. Thanks for inviting me. You know, my wife and I were watching TV last night, and we sort of laughed at how many times we saw a Viagra commercial or a low testosterone commercial. Is it really that bad in America, low testosterone or low T issues? Yes, um, they've, uh, it's much younger than it used to be, and it, it's stress. It's we stress. do know. Is that the biggest cause? That's the cause. What other causes do you see associated with it? Um, most of the time, it's, uh, it can be trauma. Head trauma for men is significant because it affects, uh, head trauma affects the growth hormone and affects the pituitary, which then you really get a decrease um, in testosterone production because of the pituitary, you know, to the uh, testes axis. What about even in the postmenopausal side, the hot flashes and night sweats that we're seeing a lot of, how do, what, do you, where, what hormones are really out of balance associated with that? All of them. All of them? Because usually, yes. But most significant is estradiol because if people are only on estrogen, it would take care of a lot of those symptoms. But you need testosterone for libido, you need it for strength, um, you need it for muscle tone, uh, you still need progesterone to balance uh, th those two hormones because really estrogen and testosterone are growth hormones and progesterone helps downregulate uh, both of those um, to, de you know, to decrease the risk um, of uh, developing cancer. So wh what, what things are you suggesting to people to help balance hormones besides just taking hormones? We know that's the somewhat easier part, but what, what about nutrition for them? What, what do you do for that? Well, um, when I first see, you know, my, uh, anybody for hormones, we still start at the gut level. Gotta fix the intestine. Um, we, well, we know just not counting the, the normal bacteria that we want there, but you know, 80% of a neurotransmitter called serotonin is made in our colon. I mean, people just think it's something that just digests food and goes in one out the other, but it's, it's a huge, huge important organ that I think is really ignored. And you mentioned serotonin, you're talking about our feel-good hormone, correct? Right. So it, it, gut can also help us with our energy levels and our digestion, our immune, everything on that Right, side. I've seen you know, good diets and a, and a probiotic and a great vitamin change people. So Just what, simple things. What kind of great vitamins are you suggesting to help support uh, this process? Well, I think you, you need a very good uh, multiple vitamin, a plant-based that usually has, uh, a lot of them will have several herbs and things that will help with um, your um, hormonal, support the hormonal uh, side of it. One of our hottest products selling right now is vitamin D. What, why do you think everybody's slow in vitamin D right now? What's surprising is after you're exposed to the sun to absorb proper D, you're really not even supposed to shower for up to 36 hours. So who does that? So you, your real absorption of D is, is, is very tough. I'm glad to hear that people are buying it because, you know, I think most people, adults need at least 5,000 international units a day. But what you need to do is have your doctor measure you. Keep your level above 50, whatever that takes, because that's why, you know, just a blank statement or, or say, oh, that's too much. Well, you, we don't know too much. We have nice, easy blood tests to, to tell us. Um, how much you know your level is and to keep it there. And most people don't even know that vitamin D is actually a hormone. Yes, because if it had not been labeled in the 40s, you, we would have, it'd have to be a prescription because it is a hormone. But people, yeah, patients don't realize that. They, but, they think it's a vitamin. Would you recommend anybody just buying DHEA or pregnenolone and taking it by itself without testing? Without measurements, no. And I, I know a lot of people do, but it's kind of like the iodine and, and D levels, um, you know, Pregnenolone, the, you know, the steroid pathway is, it, every, everything's made from cholesterol, so you have to have a decent level of cholesterol. You're saying all steroid hormones are from cholesterol. Cholesterol, and then it, it goes to pregnenolone and then to DHEA. So they're the top of the cascade of our hormones. So you start supplementing um, a bunch of DHEA, which in women will make testosterone and give them acne if it's too high, and in men it converts to estradiol. So a lot of men see that it's a precursor to muscle building and testosterone, but in a man's body, it doesn't do that. 
and most of that estrogen is stored in our fat cells too, right? Right. So it's possible that the more weight we have, the more estrogen we can actually store. Right. So that's that can correct. cause a lot of imbalances in our hormones too. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Stroud, that's some great information. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Brian, for inviting me. To learn more about hormones or any other health topic, come see us at Sunflower Shop, where great health is just a way of life.